Hello and welcome to Middle Eastern Thursday. So today, guys, I have a real special treat for you because for the last couple of months, I've been rounding up all of the Middle Eastern fragrances that have been inspired by either a niche or a designer fragrance in my collection. I'm sure that you will agree with me that it seems like every day there are multiple Middle Eastern fragrances that we discover were inspired by a specific niche or designer fragrance. So what I want to do today is share with you which is the best Middle Eastern fragrance that I think is the closest to a specific designer or Western niche fragrance that I have in my collection. So of course, first I will be sharing with you the designer or Western niche fragrance that I have in my collection. And then I will be sharing with you which is the Middle Eastern fragrance that I believe comes the closest to that fragrance. I have a total of 10 fragrances, so I'm going to be moving rather quickly because it's also quite late in the day here. Anyway, but before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I am Arahi and I'm your fragrance concierge because I am totally committed to creating the best fragrance experience for you. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, guys. So as I said in the opening, I do have 10 fragrances that I'll be sharing with you today. And it's been a very, very long day for me from work. And of course, now I'm filming, which is fine, but it is very late. So I'm going to move rather quickly. And I don't think that I have to share the notes with you uh, in detail because most of these fragrances, if not all, we have discussed here on the channel before. And we are going to go ahead and start with Initio's Oud for Greatness. Now guys, this is a fragrance that has had so, so many different Middle Eastern fragrances inspired by this fragrance. It is just amazing to me. So I do have several of them in my collection. And by the way, I want you to know that I am preparing for a serious declutter because I have the OGs and then I have not one, not two, but most of the time I have several Middle Eastern fragrances that were inspired by the OG that I have in my collection anyway. So I will be doing a declutter very, very soon of all of those fragrances that I'm really not interested in keeping in my collection. They may perform well, I may even like them, I may love them, I may even enjoy them, but I really don't have unlimited space. So I'm sure you can understand, but anyway. So let's talk about the one that I think is the best, the one that I think comes the closest to truly what Initio's Oud for Greatness is. And of course, I'm speaking about Chagaf Oud Royal. Now guys, this fragrance is truly exactly Oud for Greatness. I remember when I first uh, tried this fragrance, it immediately brought Oud for Greatness to mind because it, it is just unmistakable. This, in my opinion, is almost a 100% spot on. This fragrance has some nutmeg, has saffron, has of course oud and i'm sure you can remember i do have a dedicated video on the channel where i actually review the entire collection this entire collection and i did talk to you about the need to really really love the note of patchouli because the note of patchouli in this fragrance is quite intense that is the only kind of difference that I pick up between Initio's Oud for Greatness and Chagaf Oud Royale because I find that the patchouli in this fragrance is a bit more intense than in the OG. Now for this next fragrance, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit because the Middle Eastern fragrance that I am going to be speaking about next is one that, if I recall correctly, I've never shared with you on the channel, but it is a fragrance that I will be featuring when I start to prepare you for the fall and winter season. And I'm speaking about Afnan's Historic Almeida. Let me go ahead and share the notes of this fragrance with you. And of course, then I will tell you which fragrance it was inspired by and we'll talk a little bit about that so the notes of this one at the top we have grapefruit juniper 
pink pepper, and cardamom. In the middle, we have Calabrian bergamot, we have cedar, nutmeg, and jasmine. And then at the base, we have apple, ambergris, musk, and patchouli. Now guys, as soon as I sniffed this fragrance, and I've already had the chance to test it because again, I've been preparing, you know, for the uh, content for fall and winter. But as soon as I uncapped it and I just sniffed it, I am telling you, I knew that it was Chanel Blue. This of non-fragrance is the most accurate. It is almost 100% spot on. There is really no difference that I can pick up at all, not even in the note structure. There is nothing that I pick up that tells me that there's actually a difference between Almeida and Chanel Blue. Let me know if you've tried Historical Maida from Afnan and what do you think? If you own Chanel Blue, have you tested them side by side or have you sniffed them both? What are your thoughts? The next fragrance that I want to share with you is Mansara Roses Vanille. Now guys, of course, this is one that I think there's like maybe like four different Middle Eastern fragrances that have allegedly been inspired by this fragrance. But I can tell you, and I'm sure that this will not be a surprise, that I think that the one that is truly spot on is Ajwad. Oh my goodness. Latafa's Ajwad is truly, when I tested these two side by side, I just could not believe it. So I think that the secret of Latafa's Ajwad, you know, being so close and almost 100% spot on Rose's Vanille from Mansara is all about the way the rose was done. Because in my opinion, it is not very easy to really get the rose note really 100% spot on if you're trying to do an inspired by or dupe fragrance. But these two fragrances, I'm telling you, it is so hard to pick up on any differences. I think that the only thing that I do pick up is a bit of a difference in the intensity of the fruitiness between these two fragrances, but even that is negligible. So for me, Ajwad is the best of all of the fragrances that I've had a chance to sniff that have been inspired by Rose's Vanille. I would say Ajwad is definitely the one to go for. So the next fragrance that I'm going to share with you guys, I don't know if you'll remember when I hauled this fragrance, but I was impressed from first sniff, but I was also so heartbroken because you guys know that I'm a Bond number no. 9 girl, so I am very, very loyal to the fragrance houses that I have been following for years, and this is definitely one of them. So I am speaking about the Middle Eastern fragrance that was inspired by Bond number no. 9's Greenwich Village. Oh my goodness, guys. I just could not believe it. I could not believe it. I don't know if you remember when I hauled Avenue London. I just kind of like paused when I sniffed the fragrance because I just could not believe that they really had been able to really break the code, in my opinion, of Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9 and give us something that is almost 100% spot on, guys. Let me know if you own Avenue London and have you tried or have you compared it or have you sniffed Greenwich Village and what do you think? Because I am telling you, these two are pretty much spot on. If I had to speak to just one negligible difference, it would be in the way that the lychee note has been done, which also translates to the level of sweetness of the fragrance. I do find Avenue London to be a bit less sweet than Greenwich Village. But other than that, guys, I just don't pick up on any major other differences. All right, guys, so this next fragrance is one that, you know, I have to tell you that most of the fragrances of the OG fragrances that we're going to be discussing today are fragrances that are very, very, very dear to me. And this next one is actually a fragrance that was my signature scent for several years and a fragrance that I plan to continue to pick up as long as I can find it. And I'm speaking about Bulgari's Tigger. Now, this fragrance, guys, there's been at least four other Middle Eastern fragrances that have been inspired by this fragrance. 
And here on the channel, I do have a video where I am speaking about this fragrance and definitely addressing how I really believe that Suspiro's vibrato, somewhere along the line, you know, there's just very direct similarities between those two fragrances. And when I picked up vibrato, I did do a dedicated review and I did bring in Bulgari's Tigger and I did compare them because they are that spot on guys. But now fast forward, now we have in Middle Eastern fragrances, several fragrances and I have reviewed them all here on the channel. But I have to tell you that of the two that I've had the opportunity to try, which one is from North Stag and the other one is from Cadlash. And I can tell you that I think that La Prestige Empress is almost a 100% spot on of Bulgari's Tigger. Now, both of these fragrances have a very, very citrusy opening, and that opening with those citrus notes is also fresh spicy. They both have quite a bit of musk, and I can tell you that they are very, very aromatic. These are two fragrances that I, I'm telling you, I really struggle with finding any difference, and believe me, I tried because I could not believe that Catlash was able to get it so, so right. I mean, I love Cat Lash fragrances, but my goodness, this is a fragrance that is so, so special to me. And even when I compared Tigger to uh, Suspiro's Vibrato, if you watch that video, I did find some differences and they were not negligible. But here, oh no, this is almost 100% spot on. Let me know if you've tried both of these or your thoughts. So this next fragrance, guys, it's almost like comical at this point because almost every day I'm doing research on fragrances, whether it's Western niche or Middle Eastern or designer or affordable, it doesn't matter, right? And without a doubt, when I go into Middle Eastern fragrances, there's always yet another fragrance that was supposedly inspired by Killian's Angel Share. And I have to tell you that of all of the ones that I have sniffed, and I am pretty sure I have, snuffed, I have not sniffed all of the ones that are out there because I'm telling you, almost every day there's another one, but I can tell you that the one that for me is almost 100% spot on is definitely Latafa's Kamra. And I'm sure that that does not come as a surprise to you. Now, both of these fragrances open with quite a bit of woodiness. They also have a good amount of vanilla, which we love. There's a boozy quality that you cannot deny in both of these fragrances. They both have a powdery dry down and the powdery dry down is almost exactly the same. And then they are very warm, spicy courtesy of the note of cinnamon, which is quite dominant in both fragrances. So I can tell you, I just, I just really can't find a really, really large difference that allows me to say that maybe Kamra is just a twist to Angel Share. I really believe that this is the closest any Middle Eastern fragrance has come to really being Killian's Angel Share. So here is the next fragrance, which is also very, very painful for me because this is a fragrance from a designer and I absolutely love this fragrance. And I'm speaking about Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. And let me tell you what I think is the deal breaker in trying to be inspired or be a dupe for this fragrance. It's all about, in my opinion, the earthy quality of Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. For me, when you're trying to give a fragrance an earthy quality, it is quite hard to not get it like muddy or kind of like smelling like dirty. I don't know how to explain it. But the way that the earthiness has been done in Tom Ford's Noir de Noir is just majestic. It is worthy of a masterpiece. And the fragrance, the Middle Eastern fragrance that was inspired by Noir de Noir, has it down to perfection. Our Moth Club de Nuit Intense. Wow. And I still remember when I picked it up, I had not yet started my deep journey into Middle Eastern fragrances. So I was a little bit skeptic, right? And I thought, oh yeah, whatever. You know, they're saying that it's inspired and that it's supposed to be like Tom Ford, Noir de Noir. Never. It'll never happen. 
Well, I'm sure that if you've tried this fragrance and you also have Tom Ford Noir de Noir, or if you've had the opportunity to just sniff them both side by side, I'm sure that you will agree with me that my goodness. And you know what really amazes me about these two fragrances is that even the olfactory journey to my nose is exactly the same. The dry down is also pretty much the same with negligible differences, but honestly guys, this is almost a spot on of Tom Ford Noir de Noir. So this next fragrance, guys, is from my favorite fragrance house. So of course, if you've been with me for a while, you know I'm talking about Zerja. But it just so happens that this fragrance that I'm going to speak about in a minute happens to be my least favorite Zerja fragrance. I have a pretty large collection of Zerja fragrances, and I do have a dedicated video here on the channel where I rank them and I show you all of my Zerja fragrances specific to the seasons of spring and summer. And in that video, I did feature Herba Pura because of course, this is perfect for spring and some summer days. But I also shared with you in that video that this is my least favorite Zerjoff fragrance period for any season because of the fact that it's just like a fruit bomb and it is just so overwhelming. I really find it at times kind of cloying. I did wear it at one point to like a summer event and I just felt like I was going to choke. It was really just a bit too much because the sweetness and the fruitiness and then the vanilla and the muskiness, it's just, it's just too much. But it is a lovely fragrance if you wear it in cooler weather. At least that's my opinion. That's how I use it. But let's talk about the one Middle Eastern fragrance that did get this right. I'm talking about right in every way. And it's our Mains Amber Oud Gold Edition. Wow. Have you guys had the opportunity to test these two or try them side by side? Guys, there is no difference between these two fragrances. I don't know how they did it because the level of fruitiness in this fragrance is just like, that is the one thing that I really don't appreciate about this fragrance. It's just too much. It's truly like a fruit bomb. And at that, you know, it like the olfactory journey is almost linear in my opinion because of all the fruitiness. The vanilla is quite strong. There's a lot of vanilla in the fragrance, which puts that sweetness like over the top. So it's just a lot. But I find that both fragrances behave the exact same way. They have the exact same olfactory journey, at least to my nose. The dry down is the same. It is just very, very interesting. They both have that overwhelming, like fruity opening, which also has some citrusness to it. So it does bring a little bit of freshness. There is a bit of a spicy quality to the fragrance, but it's like a fresh spicy, which will be with you until like midway through the olfactory journey and then disappears because the fruits take over. The vanilla is definitely very, very strong, at least to my nose, and it is very, very sweet. I'm telling you, these both give me the exact same experience. Only difference, and it is quite negligible, that I have found between these two resides in two pieces, right? Number one, the level of muskiness. I think that Herba Pura is definitely muskier. And then the level of powderiness at the dry down, at least on my skin, I find that Haramains definitely has a bit more powdery for me. So this next fragrance that I'm gonna share with you is Oud Bouquet from Lancome. Now guys, you know that there are at least two fragrances Two fragrances that everybody says were inspired by this one and that they are exactly the same. Let me start by talking about Oud Mood. So you guys know that I have Oud Mood. You know because you saw me haul it that from the beginning I was not like very convinced. I've, I've allowed it to sit. It's still sitting. I'm still not very sure that I'm liking that fragrance. There's just something in it that I'm picking up that doesn't allow me to put it in the same realm as Oud Bouquet, which is a fragrance that I actually absolutely love. But when it comes to Chic Al Shiyuk Luke's edition, wow. These two, spot on guys, spot on. Please let me know if you have both of these fragrances in your collection and you've had the opportunity to test them side by side, please tell me your thoughts because I find no difference basically between these two fragrances. 
The one note that I thought would maybe make a difference, it's in the way that the oud has been done. That is what made me not consider oud mood as a true contender for being the one that is spot on of oud bouquet because I find that the oud in that fragrance is not smooth, but I do find that the oud in oud bouquet is definitely smooth. It is a very present oud. It is a very intense note in this fragrance, in my opinion. It's like a maybe four out of five oud in oud bouquet. Well, it's also a four out of five, at least to my nose. I mean, these two fragrances have been done pretty much in the same way when it comes to the oud because the oud is quite dominant um, and the oud is present from the first moment you sniff it all throughout the wear of the fragrance. But in my opinion, the oud has been done extremely well, very nicely done, very smooth, even though it is intense and it's been done the same way in both fragrances. Other than that, guys, I can't even speak to any other differences or any other point that I think that we should discuss about these two because to my nose, they are pretty much spot on. All right, guys, so this last fragrance, I have to tell you, the Middle Eastern version is one that I haven't had in my collection for a long time. But when I tell you that I just felt I had to bring it to this video and I am speaking about Gritti's Duquesa. Now I'm sure you know that I'm talking about Afnan's Supremacy Tapas Rouge. I'm not going to say that they're 100%, but I'm telling you they're at least 90%. And I keep wearing them side by side. I've even layered them. I mean, because... I really am not finding much of a difference between these two fragrances. The one thing that I did try to do was test the cherry, right? Because I thought, well, the note of cherry is not an easy note to get down, so I'm sure that that'll be the problem that I find with this one. No, not really, guys. They are almost spot on. The only thing that I can tell you is that the cherry in Afnan's is a bit brighter than what you find in Duquesa because to me, the cherry in Duquesa is definitely a dark cherry and it is more of a dark fragrance. And I hope I'm not being jaded, but I do find Duquesa to be a bit of a sexier fragrance than Afnan's. But all in all, guys, if I'm being honest and if you've tried both of these fragrances, then you know that the differences between them are truly minimal. They're both nutty, very, very fruity. They open very fruity with that incredible cherry. The cherry is juicy in the opening and it's very realistic. In Duquesa, I find that cherry to be dark, dark cherry. And in Afnan's, it's, it is a dark cherry, but it is a brighter kind of cherry. You know, when I first tried it, I thought, well, maybe the cherries are different because I thought that that was definitely something that I was picking up. But no, because throughout the olfactory journey, the cherries starts to become the same cherry that I'm picking up in Duquesa. I do wonder because I haven't even given this one time to really sit and macerate. I wonder how it will change through the months if maybe, you know, maybe the cherry will change. But as of right now, I'm getting the same thing from both fragrances. Then there's the note of iris, which brings that powderiness exactly the same, guys. And then I really thought that maybe the note of leather would be the, you know, like the game changer. Nope, exactly the same to my nose. Please let me know if you've tried both of these fragrances and your thoughts. Are you finding any differences? Because I really want to find someone that can tell me that they are finding a difference because I just can't believe that right now everything is so pretty much the same with the exception of those very little differences that I mentioned before. The one thing that I will tell you is that there is a metallic quality to Duquesa that I'm not quite picking up in non supremacy. I'm really not picking up on that metallic, but I wonder if it's because this one has not had a chance to macerate and later I'll be picking up on that metallic quality. So in any event, I am giving this one as much time as it needs to sit, even though I am using it and I actually sniff it almost every day because I am so, so curious to see if this will end up being such a spot on dupe for my Duquesa. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's video and I hope that this was as enjoyable for you as it was for me because this has just been such an interesting journey, guys. And I was telling you at the beginning of the video that I have a declutter that is about to happen because 
I have so, so many fragrances. I'm in the hundreds of Middle Eastern fragrances at this point, and I'm sure that you understand that that is the case because I've been hauling with you and talking to you about so many fragrances. And then there's those fragrances that haven't even made it to the channel yet that I'm working on behind the scenes and preparing content for you. So one of these days, do not be surprised when I have a declutter video focused exclusively on Middle Eastern fragrances. Anyway, guys, as always, I want to thank you for hanging with me today, and I will see you all in the next video.